Welcome back to another Time Out with Timothy. Hope you're having a good week. Hope things are going your way and looking up. Sun's shining bright and everything's great. I do want to say before we get going here, if you do like what you've been getting from this, uh, this channel, these little chats, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification, like the videos and the channel. It would sure help me out. I'd appreciate it as, as we try to grow this thing and, uh, and see what it can become. Um, again, not looking for a lot out of this thing personally. Just want to get some, uh, get some thoughts out. Hopefully something that will help somebody and, uh, and inspire somebody to do some more thinking on a deeper level of some stuff. Um, anyways, we'll get on into it. Um, like I said, hope you've had a lot of good things happening with you. We've had some good things happening around here this week. One of which, at least from my standpoint, being a, 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 a sports fan, and particularly a football fan, the NFL is back this week. Um, as a Steeler fan, my first week didn't go too well. But football is back, I'll take it. And we'll see how the rest of the year goes. But millions watched, millions loved it. Many, many, many went to the games in person cheered them on, had a great time. Uh, we have a lot of love for sports in this country. We also have a decent amount of hate for sports in this country. We have a love-hate relationship is what they would say. You know, the games, they excite us. The, the big runs, the, the, the pinpoint passes that thread in, them, uh, in the little teeny windows that they just have to be perfect to, to get to the completion the, the uh, big hits, we love them, but the big hits also bring in the hate factor. We are scared on some level uh, of the danger associated with the game. You know, the, the players have to deal with long-term injuries. Um, we've seen a lot of stuff uh, associated with safety becoming more and more talked about, uh, and it's been especially key in the NFL. You know, the NFL has had to deal with a concussion issue over the past, you know, 10 or 20 years. It's become more and more prevalent. Whether they covered it up for years, whether they didn't know, I don't know. I'm not going to dive into all that. But nonetheless, in the last 10 to 20 years, they, they really have been doing a lot to try to uh, minimize concussions in the game. Then you've got players out there saying that their bodies experience the equivalency of multiple car crashes during the course of a game, plus whatever they experience in the limited practicing that they still do. You know, I've heard Sam say 60 to 70 car wrecks per week is what the average NFL player uh, experiences. That's a lot of damage to the body. So we love the excitement, but we hate the danger. Then something happens like what happened last year on national television, the only game going on at that point in time, where we see a man, DeMar Hamlin, literally die on the playing field and had to be brought back through CPR. Now, freak accident, it is what it is, is what a lot of football players will tell you. Many of them accept that they are playing a dangerous, dangerous game but they're doing it for a high level of compensation. Still though, the danger is there and on a, on a more societal level, it has parents talking about whether or not their kids should be playing football, contact sports in particular, and football is the most notable of those. Now, there are a lot of life lessons taught it through football. Many, many, Football players will tell you they've learned more through the game than, than anything else. They've learned more through their coaches, through their relationships with the fellow teammates than, than any classroom has ever taught them or any job has ever taught them. Uh, I never played football at that high of a level. I played it at a low enough level that I can see where they're coming from. Um, but we're scared to let our kids play it because they might get hurt. And this is a perfect illustration of where society is heading in general. We are truly 
becoming a safety first society. And my question today is, should safety really be first? Can it really be first? Obviously, it has to be a factor. It has to be considered. It has to be thought about in pretty much everything we do, right? But safety is rarely ever truly first. You know, Mike Rowe said it best in his uh, safety third speech. There are things that are prioritized over safety and is obvious by our life choices. When we get out on the highway every day, we get in a vehicle and we usually drive it faster than what we are told is the acceptable safe speed to drive. If the speed limit's 55, most of us are driving 60, 65, whatever we choose to drive. If we were truly putting safety first, we probably would still have cars because we don't want to walk that far, but we'd never drive them over 15 miles per hour probably because that's where you're truly safe. If safety was truly first, companies wouldn't make money because they wouldn't use the machinery and the things like that required to make the money because those machines have a level of risk associated with using them. From the high level fast capacity production machines to the forklifts and pilot jacks used to move finished product around and raw materials around. They all have a level of risk associated with using them. They're used daily. So safety is not first in that decision. On a personal level, what would we do in life if safety was first? Would we ever go skiing, hiking, mountain climbing, swimming, etc.? You see what I'm getting at here. We make choices every day to do things that are not putting safety first. If we were to truly put safety first, we would all be sitting around like SpongeBob basking in the glory of the indoors. Yeah, indoors. We're obviously not doing that. We're making decisions to go out and live life. So why do we do these things that lower our level of safety? Because we want to live. We do a risk assessment every day to determine if what we are about to do is worth the risk associated with it. We choose each day to get in our cars and drive at high levels of speed because it gets us where we need to go much faster and much more efficiently. And we have decided that the percent risk of us getting in an accident is worth the benefit of the more efficient mode of transportation. But as a society, we seem to be losing the understanding of the daily risk assessment. And we're moving safety higher and higher up the priority list. Now that does sound smart at face value to move safety up the priority list. Like I said before, safety is important and needs to be considered. But there is the potential at least for this to ultimately hurt society. And my belief is it does. You know, you'll hear, hear many people say that uh, we're becoming soft as a society. And that's kind of a, a slang way of putting what I'm talking about today. We are decreasing the amount of risk we are willing to take and we're doing it in the name of safety. Less risk equals less fun, less adventure less expiration, but it also means less innovation. We're going to stop growing as individuals and as a society if we continue to elevate safety on the priority list. Life stops happening when safety becomes the ultimate goal. Life is not breathing and having a heartbeat and staying above the ground. Life is a summation of experiences. It's the things we do, like I talked about before, the hiking, the swimming, the skiing, etc. It's those things. It's also the relationships that we form. And are we going to form new relationships 
if we are constantly worried about safety. You know, hey, trying to form a new relationship opens us up to rejection. Rejection hurts. So why would we risk it? Am I being a little hyperbolic here? Maybe. But so many of today's headlines seemed hyperbolic to me as little as five to ten years ago. And now they're news headlines. So we're heading there at least at some level. So am I saying throw caution to the wind and just do it? Should we? Maybe. But maybe not. That's what I'm saying. Each situation needs its own risk assessment. It needs a risk versus reward analysis to determine if the level of danger, the level of potential financial loss or emotional loss is worth whatever potential gains are available to us on the other side. Only we can make that determination for ourselves and we got to do it so that we can continue to live. So I hope you found this interesting. If you do, add some comments below, send me some questions, some thoughts, call me an idiot, whatever you want to do, just let me hear it in the comments below. I appreciate it. Remember, like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and we'll talk to you again next week.